It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Joshua Mills, and we're going to be discussing his brand new book, Power Portals, Awaken Your Connection to the Spirit Realm. Joshua, it is truly an honor. I feel like this is long overdue. I've been following you for so many years. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. It is so good to be on the show with you. This is fun. This is great. Well, and I, I, was, I was just uh, telling Joshua before the interview, he and I hung out very briefly at a Sid Roth taping six or seven years back. And so I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but I know for some of the people listening and watching this, they're like, I have no idea who Joshua Mills even is. So for the benefit of those who haven't meet you before, uh, met you before, let's kick this off with a bit of what we might call the Joshua Mills origin story. For the men and women meeting you for the first time today, what do they need to know about you? Okay, so I've been ministering for a long time. Uh, next year will actually be our 25th anniversary for the ministry, which is kind of amazing. I started in ministry in an unusual way. I was, oh, let's see here, 17 years old and um, you know, wasn't looking to get into the ministry, but the Holy Spirit touched me. And I had a major encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know, I grew up in the church, fifth generation Pentecostal. Um, I've gone to church my whole life, but it was when I was a teenager that I really encountered the power of the Holy Spirit. And that really set me on my course. Part of that process was the Holy Spirit began to teach me about praise and worship and the connection between praise and worship and his presence. And so I kind of set out on that course of just seeking the Lord with my whole heart. And in that, people started to invite me to their youth conferences and uh, weekend events, um, youth rallies to lead worship. And so I would go and do that. And I, again, I wasn't setting out to have a ministry. I was just trying to be faithful with what God had given me in the moment. And one thing progressed to the next. And the next thing I knew, I was on staff with a pastor in Florida who was also hosting a revival in California at the same time. This is the late 90s. And I started traveling around the country with him. And I did that with several different evangelists, leading worship for them. And then the Lord launched us out on our own with, um, you know, preaching and teaching. And I've written more than 20 books. And I've been kind of all over the place, more than 80 nations around the world ministering and it's amazing that in all that travel we've only met once <laughs> that's what's crazy now, now that we're having this conversation you and i are going to bump into each other like 25 times in the next right. year or two it's it's inevitable <laughs> uh, and, and i'm trying to remember if i remember correctly early on in your journey uh was was a lot of your ministry focused mostly on music i'm curious like when it when is more worship. of the the, the speaking and writing, like what, what was the kind of the shift when God's like, oh, Joshua, I'm expanding your territory to all these other things? Okay, that's a great question. And actually, it's, it's a crazy question because I wasn't expecting it to happen. I was very, I had become very comfortable just being a worship leader, you know, and I was invited to a church up in Seattle. This was early 2000s. No, maybe, no, actually, it was 1999. And I was invited to a church in Seattle and I went up there fully expecting that I was leading worship for the weekend meetings. And I led worship. And at the end, I sat down and the pastor got up. He made announcements, took an offering. And then he said, now Brother Josh was going to come and share the word. And at that moment, I wish that the floor opened up and just, you know, the great earthquake came and just kind of sucked me into the earth because I was totally not prepared for it. I wasn't. I never saw myself as a preacher. I never saw myself doing what I do today Although, you know, God had been good to me and I had testimonies that I could share. And that's kind of, I guess, what I started doing was just sharing my testimonies, things that God was doing in my life. And um, God bless that and expanded it. And suddenly everybody was inviting me to come and speak. And it was very, very uncomfortable for a long time doing that um, because I felt like I was being very stretched. But in that, you know, God does that. And that's the amazing thing. God stretches us to take us to the next place that he has for us. And uh, kind of one, one last origin story question. Again, just sort of social media stalking you through the years. It looks like you and your wife, your family, you're, you're very involved together in your ministry. How, how has it worked uh, to partner together as, as a family? Which I feel is like something that's super important uh, for any of us. But like, what, what is that? how has that worked out, I guess, for your family? It's worked in, in different kind of seasons, you know, so like 
the first 10 years when Janet and I were married, we traveled everywhere together and we had our, our son, Lincoln, and he's now almost 19 years old. And, um, you know, we would travel everywhere together. And then after that 10 years was up, then Janet had, well, we had two more kids. She gave birth to them and uh, two little girls. And it seemed like the season was changing because it didn't seem practical to be able to take everybody on the road. And so Janet and the kids stayed back a little bit. And of course, Janet's always been deeply involved in the ministry from an administrative side, also from an intercessory prayer side. And um, whenever she can, you know, be in the meetings with us. But we went through that kind of season. And now there's another transition with everything that's happened in the earth recently. You know, we had to take the girls out of school last year because the schools were shut down. So then we started homeschooling. And we've been getting in this new flow um, where now we've chosen, although the schools reopen, we chose to keep the girls homeschooling and now on the road with us. So I love it. We're entering into another season, but the family's always been very, very important and always very connected to the ministry in every way. So the girls love it right now that they're, they are absolutely thrilled to be on the road. And it has been so precious having the girls in the meetings. Um, I was just in Anaheim last weekend and to see Liberty in the altar, you know, <laughs> bowing down before the Lord and tears flowing from her, her eyes because she can feel the presence of God. It's just, it's really, really beautiful mm. to have the family connected to this. I love that. I love that. Like now my family's been homeschooling for years, but it, it's, it's so fun to see the dynamics shifting, especially this past year as children have come home. And I feel like to some degree, people are sort of rediscovering their family and, and getting right. a different vision for how God wants to send them out as a family unit. And I think that that's powerful. I, you know, I think of the language of God tor- turning the hearts of the fathers towards the sons and the hearts of the sons towards the fathers. I think we're actually legitimately seeing some of that worked out real time in this season. And, and it's a beautiful thing. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, you know, it's uh, probably enough of your origin story. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time for the book. I feel like I could ask you like 15 more questions about your background. We'll save that for another conversation. Awesome. Um, you know, just like every person has an origin story. I always feel like every book has its own origin story. Obviously, you said you've written like 20 books, but uh, for this book, in terms of whether it was an experience in your own life or a, a need that you saw in church and culture, I'm always curious, like, what was the catalyst or what, what set you down the path of wanting to put this message together? I always feel like that has a, a starting point somewhere. About 15 years ago, um, I had begun putting together a Glory Institute type of school training situation. And one of the seminars that I put together was a whole seminar about portals of glory and about portals opening up for God's people and different people to encounter the divine presence of God. And so um, I had done that. I had been teaching it for these 15 years. And of course, you know, I have a lot of testimonies I could share about these types of encounters but um, with Whitaker, when Whitaker came along and offered me a book deal, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with those books because um, I love to teach and train people, but I don't want to just tell them my experiences or even just present scripture to people just randomly. But I love to build frameworks where people are able to grasp it and say, hey, I can see myself doing this. I can see myself in this place with the Holy Spirit. I desire to be closer with God. And then in that, giving people activations to actually move into these same kind of encounters. And so that's what I've done with this Power Portals book. And I'm really excited about it. It seems like there's a lot of hunger and uh, excitement about this topic. I, I didn't actually expect it to be this uh, in demand, I guess, <laughs> because portal seems like kind of a limited genre, you know, <laughs> like a, a limited space. But the publisher already sold out of the entire first printing. They sold out by Monday this week. We were completely sold out. So less than a week, we were, we were completely sold out. Well, congratulations. So That's great. Printing, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard Amazon still has a few copies, um, which is good because they bought a lot because of the demand. But yeah, wow. amazing. Well, well, and I'll, and I'll say too, just as a guy who works in the Christian publishing industry, what, what's been fun to watch you is you're navigating multiple book releases so close together. Um, right. not, not every author or ministry can pull off sometimes releasing uh, a couple of major releases within the same 12 to 18 months. And I feel like you've been navigating that pr- pretty well. So just 
knowing the release schedule you guys have been really chasing after, the fact that you sold out already, uh, that really testifies to the demand, maybe the hunger uh, for this sort of a message. I feel like too, in terms of consumption and what's been speaking to people and feeling empowering to people really touching what they're wrestling with in this season, uh, it's, it's, you know, obviously end times books have been popular and different things, but uh, right. the range of what's really connecting with people, it's, it's shifted a bit. So it doesn't surprise me that the, this sort of a message would really track with people. Um, I know there's got to be somebody watching or listening to this right now who is like, okay, so you guys haven't actually told me what a power portal is. So that might be a good place <laughs> for us to go next. Kind of at the base level, what is a power portal? So a power portal, let's just talk about a portal in general. Okay, so a portal is a doorway, it's a gateway, it's an entrance way. It's just another way to say it's an opening. And so when we're talking about power portals, we're speaking about the power of God being released or opened to people in a specific location or in a season or in a situation or even within you personally, you know, um, God just opening up and his power flowing in to break some things open and to release miracles and the supernatural. And so that's what, that's what power portals. And, is. Uh, and it, I guess a, a couple of things I'd ask next would be, uh, you know, on the one hand, does this sometimes just break out dynamically in the moment God breaks into a, a time and a place versus um, can we also position ourselves to step into a portal, so to speak? So we can do both. And I think that's scriptural. Uh, first of all, we know that God is sovereign. So there's, you know, no place that he can't just so sovereignly open up and just explode onto the scene. And, you know, we read about the suddenlies of God all throughout scripture. So that can certainly happen. But the Bible also says that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. And this is speaking about people of faith that position their faith in such a way to put a demand on the things of God that are promised to us through the scriptures. And it's my firm conviction that people of faith create portals in the spirit. When people of faith gather together, you know, the Bible says where two or more are gathered, he's there in our midst. And this is speaking about prayer, but I really think that happens in any way when people of faith gather together and they press in for the things of God, he shows up in that moment. And it's not us forcing God. It's not us trying to twist his arm. Listen, he's given us all these promises saying, you know, I am your healer. I am your provider. I am your deliverer. I am your savior, you know, and he's given us all these promises. And when we press into the reality of that promise, we see the manifestation of it taking place on earth. Oftentimes when I see portals in the spirit and people will see them different ways, but oftentimes I see them like a whirlwind. I see them like a, a swirling, twirling. Oftentimes there's a lot of light on the inside of them. Uh, the Lord has shown me the different colors. Lights represent different aspects of his divine presence. You know, um, Green represents new growth and new beginnings and healing and provision and blue represents prophetic revelation. And, you know, we see these different things happening. But when I was writing the book and I was thinking about, you know, that swirling coming, I looked up the definition of a tornado and how tornadoes happen. And I found out that, you know, it's the warm current mixing with the cold current that creates that vortex of the tornado coming on the earth. And I think in the same way, it's the currents of heaven meeting the currents of earth that create those supernatural portals in the spirit and invite us up into those places of encountering God, hearing his voice, receiving clarity, divine wisdom, impartations of healing and miracles, all of those kinds of things. John, the revelator in Revelation chapter four said, I saw a door standing open in heaven. So he saw this portal. And he heard a voice like a trumpet behind him calling, saying, come up here and I will show you things to come. And so this is a very real reality that's coming to us and taking place in the earth right now. On well, one of the directions you went in the book, Joshua, that kind of surprised me was getting into uh, content related to our habits, our eating patterns, things that we're <laughs> consuming and experiencing and how that uh, affects our openness to port these portals, so to speak. You, you had caffeine in the uh, no-no column. I was like, I, I really want to receive what Joshua is sharing in here. But So I might need some deliverance for my caffeine addiction now. Anybody that knows me knows that I don't <laughs> drink coffee. I stay away from caffeine. Um, but it, it, that didn't start as a spiritual thing. That just 
was a preference. I have to be honest, that was just a preference, a personal preference thing. And so it's easy for me to say no caffeine because I don't do it anyway. Um, but you know, I'm not saying caffeine's a sin. Oh, no. I just I just <laughs> know that there's certain things that are more conducive to helping us to connect. And there's other things that are like a drug, you know, even like, you know, granulated sugar and things like that. Those are things that kind of make us feel weighty and dull our senses and all those kinds of things. But I spoke about the natural portals within, there's actually seven personal portals within our body. There's many more than that, but seven that I list in the book. And the main revelation of this book is that Jesus Christ, he is our portal into heavenly glory. He declares himself as the portal in John chapter 10. He says, I am the door. And we've read that many, many, as believers, we've read that and we see that. And so it surprises me when (laughs) believers come to me and they say, Joshua, you're preaching a new age message. This is not God. There's no portals in scripture. I'm like, you need to read the Bible again. I think it's just semantics. You know, I'm saying portal, you might say door. I'm saying portal, you might say gate, but it's all throughout the the word. And Jesus declares himself to be the portal, our portal, the only portal into heavenly glory. And so we go in through him. But then in Psalm 24, David speaks and he says, Open up, you ancient doors, open wide, you ancient gates, that the king of glory may come in. And so now he's not speaking about Jesus. He's speaking about the people of God, those that uh, have their heart turned towards the things of God. And he's saying, you've got to open up because as you open up, the king of glory is able to have entrance. So Jesus is our portal into heavenly glory, but then we become his portals for heavenly glory to flow into the earth. And then that's when I begin to speak about, you know, the seven different personal portals that we have. And of course, the first one's the heart. Our heart is a huge portal. Jesus stands at the door of our heart and he's knocking. That's what the Bible says. So if we don't open up the door of our heart, we really can't receive him into our lives or have him flow through our lives. And um, and so that's important. And then, of course, there's the portal of our mouth and the portal of our eyes and our ears and our mind, our innermost being, our hands and our feet. And I address all of these in the book. And I give practical ways that we can open up to the spirit in this way, but then also in turn, allow the spirit to flow out of our life in this way as well. Well, it might be too early on yet for the book, but in terms of uh, reader response, I'm curious, are you already seeing people like put this to to action, kind of test that proof that's in the pudding in their own lives? What are people saying about the book? Well, I haven't had a lot of testimonies come back from the book yet, just because it was only released last Tuesday. But we have seen the proof of this working. As I've taught this revelation over the last 15 years, I've been teaching this to believers. And as they begin to walk in this, they they begin to feel the Holy Spirit flowing through them. They begin to hear the Holy Spirit correcting them in different areas, bringing realignment. They begin to notice a noticeable change, sensing the atmosphere around them shifting because so often we use excuses, and I talk about excuses in the book, but so often we use excuses for reasons why God isn't showing up, why God's not manifesting in our home or our family, or why God's not touching our finances. And God really wants us to get rid of all the excuses because he wants to be Lord over all. And that's what this book is all about, is just allowing Jesus Christ to be Lord of our life and seeing him take dominion in every area, spirit, soul, and physical body. Well, I I liked what you just said in terms about the portal of our heart and our mouth and our our mind. I feel like this really taps into what I've seen talking to different leaders over the past like two, three years. There's this move of God to uh, usher in a whole new level of consecration and holiness right. and reverence and the deep things of God. I feel like the language is different depending on who's who's writing the book and and the audience that they're trying to reach. But uh, like w- when I see it happening in one place, I'm excited by it. But when I see like divine fingerprints on like five or ten authors bringing something, it's like oh, this is a move of God. And so I love I love that you're speaking uh, right into that space, and uh, it, it just shows how much. Uh, when, when God has something important on his heart, he uses so many vessels to get that message out there um, yes. into the world. Um, I guess I, I would say for, for you, Joshua, I'm curious uh, for the, the working out of this message in your own life, when you first started teaching on this, like where, where did this revelation come from or how did it impact your ministry in terms of kind of the, the core concept, the concepts of this book, where did that like breakthrough or revelation come through in your life? Well, you know, I had been praying into some of the things that God was showing me about portals. And I had experienced many portals 
in a in a spiritual sense experiential kind of having these encounters up in heaven having these visions having these dreams um heard people talking about it and so i began pressing into this portal's message and as i was pressing into that that's when the lord spoke to me and he said you are a portal and like he spoke that to me very very personally and this wasn't anybody else telling me it was the lord telling me you are a portal and i was like what i am a gate and then he began to lead me a little bit further into it and begin to show me areas of my life that had been a little out of order even as i was writing this book and like i told you i've been teaching this message for 15 years as i was writing this book the holy spirit was still speaking to me about some things and there was actually some shifts that took place even for me personally while i was writing this book which is amazing but you know i think sometimes we hear the message about god's grace which is so amazing i mean his grace is so it's beyond comprehension because of how good he is. But sometimes I think people have heard the message of grace and then they, in their mind, they think, okay, so this means I don't have to do anything and it doesn't matter what I do. You know, God just loves me. And the truth is God does love you regardless what you do, but he loves you so much. He doesn't want to see you keep on hurting yourself, you know, and he doesn't want to see you being unproductive. And so it's like, in the grace of god there comes a point where we realize there is a grace to walk in the things of the spirit and to walk in the holiness and the righteousness of god and it's not now out of law it's not out of works it's not out of i'm trying to strive to make god happy listen god is happy he loves you that will never change but the truth is when you want to return that love to him i heard somebody say this many years ago they said um the anointing of God is God's gift to man. Integrity is, God, is man's gift back to God. And I think that's part of this message is receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit, recognizing that there is an anointing that's being given to us, but then stewarding it with integrity, realizing this is our gift back to God. We want to honor God with our lives and with our ministry and with what we do. And as we honor him, that flow, just continues to flow you know all the blockages are are totally annihilated and you know the subtitle of this book is um, awaken your connection to the spirit realm and that's really what God is doing with us in this day he's awakening our connection so that we can be his representatives in the earth and bring heaven into the situations where we're going one of the things I was excited that you include at the end of the book Joshua is some prayers and I feel like it, one of the things that's super important is to give people activations, declarations, prayers, so they can actually start putting this uh, content, what they're learning to use. Because, you know, if you read something and you learn a little bit, it's great that it touched your mind, but it's when we actually take right. action with prayers that it really starts to make a difference. So uh, in terms of the the prayers at the end of the book, how would you like to see the readers put that to use? Well, the prayers are arranged by topic. So like there's everything from like a prayer to open up a healing portal in your life, a prayer to open a provisional portal, all the way to like a prayer to open portals over uh, giving birth to children, you know? So it's like, there's a wide range of different kinds of prayers, but I would love to see people take this and apply it and say, you know what, I'm going through this difficult. I, I struggle in sickness and disease and infirmity, and I'm going to press in. I'm going to open up this healing portal through this Holy Spirit in my life. And I would love to see people do that and then step into the manifestation of it. And, uh, you know, big picture, thinking of the reader's journey, they get to that last page, they close that back flap. What's that, that core message, that core shift you, you hope that every single reader gleans from the book? I hope every single reader realizes that they are unique, that they are loved by God, and that God wants to release heaven in their lives, and the way he'll do it is through them. And Joshua, before we go, I'd love for you to take a few moments to pray for the listeners and the viewers who are going to watch this conversation. Awesome. Well, why don't you just lift up your hands if you're watching this or listening I'm to lift this. my hands too. Lift up your hands. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are here in the midst of us. And Lord, I thank you that you are touching the lives of those that are listening. Lord, I ask for power portals to open up upon the lives of the listeners. Lord, that there would be new encounters, new experiences, new miracles, new divine supernatural flow that would flow into their lives from heaven to earth. Lord, I thank you for touching your people and bringing them into a place where they realize that you are 
Lord over all, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Joshua. And Joshua, for the listeners, the viewers who want to connect with you, find out more about your ministry, your books, where can we discover you on the web? You can go to our website, joshuamills.com, and you can find us there. Every single Tuesday night, we do a glory Bible study, and it's so fun. We do a live glory Bible study at 8 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night, and uh, you can get our books there at the website, and you can also, of course, find our books on Amazon or anywhere else that books are sold. And like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you connect with Joshua and pick up your very own copy of his new book. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabot Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Joshua Mills. Once again, our book today was Power Portals, Awaken Your Connection to the Spirit Realm. Again, if you'd like to connect with Joshua and find out more, head over to his website at joshuamills.com. And Joshua, I want to say thank you for sharing with us today. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure to finally have you on the show. Glad we got here. Thank you, Sean. This is amazing. You're amazing.